several poets that I admire say that if you know at the beginning of the poem what you're delivering at the end, you're not really writing a poem, you're taking poetic things and putting them together in a formula. And your reader's gonna know that too. Your reader stays with you much more if there's surprise, if you're actually on the ride with them. And I was thinking about the beauty of the sonnet form holding that sad, sad story of Emmett Till. And I was thinking about um, Natalie Diaz and I was reading um, a pantoum of hers recently, um, my brother at 3 a.m. And, you know, th those lines, you know, can't you see the devil? And it's taking this huge grief loss and a pretty ugly and terrifying story. And it's giving it to the reader in almost lullaby-like rhythms and repetitions making it safer for both the poet to talk about it more contained and the reader has a few handles through this frightening journey right yeah i think it's every once in a while i'm like fuck all the old forms i hate all of them or like i don't want to look at any of these but i love that like marilyn nelson and anna smith and so many others that are like sure here's my crown um are also like yeah i'm also going to dance over here in a yes. world that's not and it and there is a difference of like when when do we as poets go into a world with form and what are we doing there and like where are the surprises now also like hundreds and hundreds of years after some of these forms have been invented especially yes. for some that we are just now getting in the english language that have been around for like thousands of years or at least a thousand years and it's like what's left to say but i'm always surprised of like maybe i'm just hearing it differently maybe it's only a word different from the way it's been said before but it's always surprising and yet can like hold me which is so beautiful. i love the gift of those forms um i think about teaching my little children my kindergartners and first graders about writing i teach them you know it's not it's not me i'm teaching um lucy Calkins and the writers workshop but first then finally and it it keeps them from being completely overwhelmed by the paper. And in, in, at the beginning, we have three pages with a big piece for an illustration up at the top, a few lines for a few little words at the bottom first, then finally, and they touch the pages and tell their story, and then they write them down. And later when I move to poetry, I don't just like, okay, you know, here's some poems I wrote. Let's write one as a class. Okay, go write your own. I like, I give them structures. So much depends on. You know, they lean into William Carlos Williams or I'm going out to the blank, you come too. They lean into Robert Frost, they lean into the structures and they write these incredible things because they have incredible things to say and the guide rails give them a place to put that. I also think as like an adult, even though sometimes I like to think that I'm like more in touch with like my memories of being younger and what that means for young folks today, it it largely doesn't, or I'm largely wrong when that's what I'm leaning on. So it's nice also as an adult to like have those guide rails for me, listening to kids yes. and listening yes. to young folks to know like they have so much to share and so much brilliance and creativity and sparks and surprises. And I need those handrails <laughs> even when they don't. Right. And one of the things I love doing when I have a room full of kids and they've just published, you know, a classroom book, I, I um, will say, is it okay? I'd like to read some of the poems from this book without names attached and let you see if you can recognize each other's voices. Um, if there's anybody who wouldn't, would like me to not read their poem, just, you know, give me a quick quiet thumb and I look around the circle and there's generally nobody because we all want to hear ourselves read, especially if somebody else will read us and we don't have to do it. And the kids will be like, oh, oh, I hear Lorenzo in that. You know, there's something about the way the bats move, wings moved in that, that just I like, and so, yeah, the, the poems are, the poems are a way for us to like not only put the things we've experienced, but we grow through the writing of them. We see ourselves through the writing of them. My kids certainly do. And, and I recognize more and more since 
being in this MFA program and talking with folks like you that, yeah, like I really grow and change through the writing of the poems. I love also like rec seeing a poem through workshop change or like seeing and hearing other people read it. Cause like I had heard um, a recording of Denise Smith reading one of those two poems before, but it sounds so different yes. when someone else is reading it. And I can still go, oh, there's like a different, there's a different thing happening with the poem out in the world, which is amazing, but it's interesting too. Like the sonnet of mine that you read recently, we're just listening to it. First of all, I was just like overjoyed and in tears, just like listening to someone else read, read my writing. Um, but I also was like, oh yeah, that, that sounds like me. <laughs> right. When you can hear yourself in there in a, in a good way. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, right? oh, oh yeah, that's that stumble. Oh, I, I tend to do that, don't I? Yes. yes. <laughs>